Hi everybody, it's four o'clock, so it's time for our Learning Curve Summit. Today we are introducing our board. board. Yay. <laughs> so today you'll meet all of the people that serve on our well, most Chamber of, them. of Commerce. Most, most of, of them. them. We are missing four of our valuable members. Um, some of them are hoteliers, so they're working their front desk. Restaurant. We have somebody that's a restaurant, Crack Crab. We have Jamie and Randy Bum -bum. from um, <laughs> Randy from the Cigar Bar couldn't join us either. So, um, but we have seven of us. Yes. That have eight of us, counting Val. Yes. yes. Sorry, there are eight of us that um, you'll get to be introduced to. And hopefully, you know, you get to meet them today, learn a little bit more about them and learn about the roles that they have here within the chamber. Um, being a board of directors is something we're always looking for. So if it's something that you might be interested in down the road, we want to meet you um, and know more about you. But since we're, we're, we're obviously in a different place here today for our Learning Curve Summit, and it's always good to be in downtown Pismo Beach. But as you can see behind us, we are at Lisa's place, Pismo Beach Optics. And so we're gonna start with Lisa. You tell us about your business and tell us what, you know, how it is to be on the board, how long you've been and um, what you enjoy most. Okay, so as everybody, most people know, I'm Lisa Krupp Bosch and I own Pismo Beach Optics. And I've worked in the optical industry since 1991. And um, I was a sales rep for optical industry. I did eyeglasses for movie and television. Nice. And um, then became a trainer for uh, optical stores and the School of Optometry. And then from there, I came to owning my own business. Yay. And being right here in downtown Pismo. So, and I love it. I love doing eyeglasses. I love fitting people, um, finding the best eyeglasses for them. It's, she it's does a really good fun. job. Thank you. These are the ones I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want these, so if anybody wants to sponsor her. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you've done some different prescriptions for myself, for Simon behind the camera. Yep. Um, I've got other friends coming to you, and it's just, again, important to be able to support the local businesses. It is. Um, I really believe in supporting all of our local businesses. Um, you know, it's hard to, to go to all of them. It's like we... We promote right. maybe a restaurant, but all of our restaurants here in downtown Pismo um, are excellent. I, I love them all. And in, and in Shell Beach, don't get me wrong with just my downtown Pismo. Um, but you do prescriptions, so you can, um, you obviously have a, a big line of name brand sunglasses. Yep. I've bought readers here. I've gotten loops, the loops here. Mm -hmm. um, she's got some really I have cool have loops with a mask cases. on them. She has yeah. great cleaning spray. Oh, defogger, which you all need right now because you have masks on. Um, so, did I miss anything? <laughs> no, I think that was it. Yeah. Right. And I do repairs, so I do on on-site repairs. Oh, right, right. So, and, and tell them um, how you're taking appointments now and what you're doing um, in regards to COVID. To COVID. And by the way, we're together <laughs> like all the time, every day. So this is not abnormal for us. Right. Um, so with COVID, as many people know, a lot of businesses had to close down. So I was closed for about three, well, it wasn't three months, like two and a half months. And then when I came back to work, of course, um, I have to meet everybody with a mask on. Everybody that enters my store also has to have a mask on. And then um, everything that they've touched, I sanitize, including all of the glasses that they've tried on. Right. So um, it's safe for the next person. I even sanitize the outside of my door nice. every time somebody nice. leaves. Good. So yeah, it just makes it safer for all of us. So just give you a call, make an appointment, bring your mask yep. um, and know that you're in the safe zone. Correct. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And so what about the chamber, our, our, our chairwoman? She's been amazing. I, I could sit here and tell stories about Lisa and how amazing she's been, she's but- She's amazing. But, <laughs> but this is the floor is yours, so. So um, being the chairwoman is near and dear to my heart. I've actually really enjoyed my time as the chairwoman. And next year I'm going to be passing the baton on to Val, who is, uh, we are Thelma and Louise, or Lucy and Ethel, whatever you want to look Batman at Batman and Robin. But <laughs> Batman and Robin, yes, we are all of it. Yin and yang. Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done it without Val. As many people know, um, a lot of my time being the chairwoman um, for a year, I was um, going through breast cancer. So I couldn't have done it without the, the strength and the help of all of the community and backing me. But as far as being the chair, I think what I've enjoyed the most 
is just getting to know all of the businesses, getting to know people that work at those businesses. It has just been so incredible. Everybody, this whole community is so nice, even just the, the people that live here. Um, I was telling earlier, I had a gentleman who lives in the Heights up here in Pismo Beach and um, Mike Cotta, and he stopped by yesterday and washed my windows for me. <laughs> who does that? Who does that? That's what I said to him because <laughs> uh, my husband's been too busy to do it. So Mike Cotta took it upon himself to just come on by and clean my windows. So I, what I really love about Pismo too is that it's such a close-knit community. I've never felt such a great bond to a community as I do here. And I've, I've lived in other communities and served on other boards, um, but Pismo is just very unique and I love it here. I couldn't imagine going anywhere else. So. And, and to talk a little bit about, you know, the kinds of things that, that Lisa leads us in, you know, for example, we're gonna, you know, talk about one of the most recent things that, that she led, um, which was the outdoor dining. You know. Well, yeah, the outdoor dining was really important, especially for our restaurants. That you know, our restaurants, they have a lot of employees, and those some of those employees might be living paycheck to paycheck. So for me, it was really important to get these restaurants to be able to start serving outside, especially in our downtown area, that doesn't have parking lots. So across the way from me is uh, Giuseppe's, and then up the street we have Crack Crab, mm -hmm. La Bodega. Ada's, Ada's. Roses. we have uh, the Thai place, we also have Roses, and then behind me is Poppy's, Penny's, Honeymoon Cafe, Dell's. But those so are places with existing Those are all or... places that had parking lots. Mm -hmm. So they were able to put tables and chairs in their parking lots. But downtown um, was a little, it was a little bit more challenging. Um, challenging. Thank you, Val. Um, and where we had to get permission from the city to be able to put parklets so they could have outdoor dining. And so far that's working really well. Um, right now we have Cool Cats and Splash that have been doing it for about a week. And then later tomorrow probably will be Chipwrecked, Hot Shots and Pismo's Cafe. Um, and then some other restaurants are doing outdoor dining like Hoagie's has a little dining area. I believe um, fish and chips. Fish and Pismo's chips. Fish and chips yep. is coming. Yeah. And so. uh, and I think the boardroom is also working on a little something. So. And the boardroom actually has outdoor dining on their sidewalk yeah. right now. Yeah. So go visit the boardroom. Um, they have it all roped off, and they have tables and chairs out in front. But so don't. I mean, don't discount the fact that, you know, Lisa has been literally on the phone with these businesses ever since that was passed last Tuesday by city council. And when I say literally on the phone, this woman is on the phone from the morning until nighttime. So businesses can, <laughs> can reach out weekends. Um, I have a different role in supporting a lot of leading up to those kinds of things and press releases and all the media side of it. But Lisa is definitely the day-to-day -day contact and she's very patient about it. And, you know, she's just, she just makes it happen. And I think having that kind of support here in the community, um, we get thanked on a daily basis for what we're doing. Um, and again, us two working together has been, it's been great. I, I couldn't do it with it without her and I don't think she could do it without me, we, you know. I always said I wouldn't do it without Val. If she left, then I left. It's and, a definite team. And we're, we're definitely a teamwork, yeah. I couldn't do this without Valerie either, so. And yeah. let me remind you, we are not paid. <laughs> None of our board is paid. So yeah. for us to do and accomplish, I feel like all that we have and not that we're bragging on ourselves, but we kind of are, um, we've kind of kicked butt. We've, we've done a really good job. And from day to day, I always say we're flying by the seat of our pants, but you know what? I think the, the businesses recognize that this is our passion. This is where our heart is and we're going to fight for them and we're going to stand up for them. And they know that they can call on us and they can get our support. So, absolutely. Um, so thank yep. you for everything you do. You're welcome. Val. You are amazing. It's, it's my pleasure. And Valerie, let's talk about you. Okay. So tell us a little bit about you, Valerie. So I have been uh, part of the Pismo Chamber of Commerce for, I want to say, three years. 
I was supposed to take the seat of president last year. <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, I have a lot going on with my own business, which is Noble Productions and Marketing. Um, and then I, so I decided to go ahead and, and continue as vice president. And Lisa agreed to continue as president. And that's what we decided to do. And we've been through a lot together, <laughs> um, a lot. I think most of you know. Um, however, we could have never anticipated the pandemic. You right. know, that was something that that we look at now. And if we've made it through something like this, I think I think we could pretty much make it through anything. So, to watch the businesses rise and fall and rise and fall, and um, to be the foundation of where they come to for support. Um, that actually brought us up and I think we realize what we're fully capable of doing here for this community together. Um, not just between the two of us, but of course our board. Um, we couldn't have done it without the help of our board and each of them has strengths um, that we've recognized and so we, we, you know, we call on them when we need for certain things because Again, we're running our businesses. We're really trying to anyway, and it, it gets <laughs> tough sometimes. You know, the balance um, between our personal lives and and uh, the chamber and um, and running our businesses, and it gets tough. But the nice thing is, her and I can lean on each other when things like that happen, and we have frustrations, and we just both want to like, you know, one of us wants to walk away, but the other one's like, no, and so we kind of go back and forth. So I think that's kind of a cool balance. Um, and then Jeanette uh, Vieira, I don't want to go without mentioning her support. Um, she's been our secretary and she has been amazing. And um, she's helped us with our membership and clean up our database. Oh my gosh, um, she's amazing. Uh, just a lot of things. So um, thank you to the board. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you so much, Lisa. And I'm, I am very proud to be a part of this um, and, and that's part of maybe why I wasn't, I wasn't willing to become president this past year. It wasn't where it needed to be. And I feel 100% confident now that going into this upcoming year that I would be proud to be president and proud to represent this Chamber of Commerce. And um, I'm looking forward to it. So as far as Noble Productions and Marketing is concerned, um, I do a lot of different marketing services. I think a lot of people already know um, my, my joy is doing interviews and doing live uh, oh, social media. <laughs> um, you know, I was on TV for like 10 years and still have um, some of my productions out on public access channels and surrounding communities. Um, I'm going to be doing something here in Fresno. I haven't even told the chamber about yet, um, but we're going to be doing some spotlighting um, and some segments in Fresno, well, actually Bakersfield here soon. So there will be more to come on that. And then um, I work very closely with my brother, Simon Mercado, who's behind the camera. We've been um, focusing on live streaming during the pandemic and um, investing in that. And um, I must say that Simon's becoming very efficient with that. And so people that need live streaming services, social media marketing, social media management, consulting, um, anything digital marketing based, I can help support with in addition to producing commercials and segments and videos for any of your platform needs. Um, and I consider myself a business consultant. So if you have an idea or a concept and you're not sure, um, that you're thinking of everything. I'm kind of those eyes from the outside looking in and I can immediately assess things and tell you here's what you need to work on and here's what you need to do. Um, and for me to be an independent contractor, I think works in most cases for a lot of businesses because it's not like you have to hire somebody on staff and have this huge budget. Um, I can accomplish what you need based on whatever budget you have. Um, and I'm happy to just help the small businesses in our community. I've been doing that for over 10 years now. so. You've it's, done a lot it's, for me with it's, my business. It's been a good fit. And we're doing more for Lisa. Um, we're working on, well, Simon rather is working on setting her up on um, e-commerce for uh, social media. And we have another client here in town that we're working on setting up a Shopify website, um, a whole development uh, in conjunction with their POS system. Um, so. You know, I'm always up for a challenge. We do graphic design. We have uh, professional photography, photography available. So really we're a whole package and we're local. So before you source something out, or even if you're gonna go advertise on KSBY or, or the newspaper or any other media outlet, consult with me first. Um, I work with all of these people on a regular basis and have been for several years. In addition to 
um, outside media. So I write press releases <laughs> and um, she does all of the press releases. I do the all chamber. the press releases <laughs> and just a slew of whatever you need when it comes to marketing and when it comes to media. So including email blast marketing. So anyway, I know that's a lot, but um, it's my passion. I love it. And uh, well, Valerie, you are the reason why um, our Pismo Beach Chamber of Commerce now has over 7,000 followers and it's climbing every day. So thank you. I mean, I don't even think we were probably at a thousand before. Well, so you guys, it was it was work. But yeah. once once we got it up over 5,000 followers on Facebook, you know, now it's just it just happens organically. So. Um, we don't even do a lot of boosting on our page. We don't need to. We have eyeballs coming to the Pismo Chamber of Commerce Facebook page on a daily basis because we're in a tourist-like community. Same with our Instagram. We didn't even have an Instagram really when I started. Mm -hmm. um, and now that's up, I think, close to a couple thousand followers. So, and now they have a YouTube channel and, you know, and now Lisa does go live videos with me and, and she's <laughs> not shy to be in front of the camera. So. Um, <laughs> video has a lot of power I'll tell you a lot of marketing power and go live videos have been a huge hit for us at the chamber so um, so that's what I have for you but I think we got to get to the rest of our board members because they're all just as great as we are <laughs> <laughs> they are and again I know you touched on Jeanette so Jeanette will be our next yes. she is our uh, executive secretary and she is just amazing amazing great help. she's new for this year and um, I don't have enough nice things to say about Absolutely. her. I mean, I can go on and on. Absolutely. So, Jeanette, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Jeanette Vieira. I'm the owner of Be Connected Business Solutions. And what I do is I help businesses just get organized. We do CRM integration and development. Um, we offer virtual assistant services. We do anything to just help businesses stay on track so that they can continue to move forward, especially in today's environment that's been a challenge for a lot of businesses. I moved to this area four years ago and started my business and have just really, really enjoyed living here in the Central Coast. Awesome. So um, how has COVID impacted your business, Jeanette? Like everyone, um, I saw an immediate decrease in business. I had some very large contracts that just got put on hold because they just didn't know where the future was going to be for them. So for me, I was very lucky that I was able to kind of step back and see where I could make a difference in both the community and with businesses. So being able to provide support services to businesses, especially when, you know, they had staffing issues or they just didn't know where to go from there has really helped me help my business number one but it's also really helped me connect with the community which is something i really enjoy and you're really good at that too thank you and jeanette what is your position on the on the chamber of commerce i am the board secretary so basically i help you and val and the rest of the board keep things going hey. <laughs> and i have to say jeanette i'm bowing down to you you are you are quite a woman, so thank you for everything you do. And what is being on the board uh, meant to you? You know, I'm one that really likes to be involved in my community. So when I first came to the area, I got involved with different organizations and through my connection with the San Luis Obispo Women's Network, I got in contact with Valerie and started learning more about the Pismo Chamber. And I helped with one event and was hooked. I just, I love what this chamber does for our businesses. I love the heart that this chamber has and the fact that everybody here, we're all volunteers and we do this because we love our community and we love our businesses. And for me, that makes all the difference. That's awesome, Jeanette. Thank you so much. We all really appreciate you and everything you bring to the chamber. Thank you. Thank you. So next I'm going to call on, hey, did everybody move around on me? I'm gonna call on Denise. And Denise, share a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Denise holt Wasson. I am originally from the Valley Shaver Lake Fresno area. Moved to this area about three years ago. Um, pretty much spent my entire childhood up and down the beach communities, uh, all summers and all of our 
holidays were spent here. So I've always had a passion to come back and be part of the community. Um, and I'm retired. I'm a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother. Um, so we're a very busy household. Yes. Denise, tell us how many people you, since you retired, tell us about how many people live in your house with you. <laughs> well, we have nine. We have custody of five grandchildren. Um, so I had to seek out a house big enough for this uh, giant compound that we have. And we wouldn't have it any other way. We love it. Yeah. And Denise, how has COVID impacted you and your family? Well, um, it has on different levels. Um, one is I was a volunteer for hospice. And unfortunately, because of that, um, I was no longer able to go and see my patients um, as a volunteer, which was sad because all these people are in these homes alone. Um, it, of course, we were all on lockdown in this compound, <clears throat> excuse me, together. <laughs> so and trying to get these kids uh occupied and not go crazy within the home. Um, and then also within our business community, um, I saw the struggles that all of our business community um, and all of our members of the chamber were going through and all of my fellow board members um, and their businesses. So it was a very, very sad and scary time. And still yes. is. It still is. And you had all those kids to homeschool too. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite a job in itself. <laughs> subject. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> and Denise, what is your position on the Chamber of Commerce? I am on the board um, and I also do membership and um, I would be more than happy if anyone is wanting to be a member to come to your business and bring a packet and talk to you about the benefits. And also if there are members um, that have something going on and you want it to be shared on Facebook, please contact one of us or myself and I will be more than happy to share it on our Facebook page. We have a lot of followers. And Denise, you also do a great job of getting um, items for us for, do for not donation, but our raffle items um, yeah. for different events. Yes, I yeah. am the raffle queen. <laughs> yes, you are. So we thank you for that. And can you tell me a little bit about what being on the board has meant to you? Well, it's been an honor to be part of it, especially not being a business member. A lot of times people will say, well, what, what's in it for you? Um, and what's in it for me is to see all of our businesses within our community succeed. Um, if they don't succeed, there, there's no Pismo Beach, there's no Grover Beach, there's no Shell Beach, there's no Avila Beach. Um, and that, the success of seeing our businesses flourish, um, our board is an incredible board. Like, like Jeanette said and Lisa said, we are volunteers. Um, we do this because we have a passion and a love for our community and our businesses and we want to see them succeed. So it's an honor for me to be part of the board. Well, thank you, Denise. We are so honored to have you. Really, you. you are are quite a blessing to our board. Thank you. Thank you. So next, we're going to hear from Daryl. And Daryl, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, good afternoon, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Daryl Buck, and I am the president of Group Purchasing Solutions. It's a company I founded about 20 years ago in the Bay Area. So four years ago, I relocated down here with my family and my business. We chose to live south of town, out in the middle of incorporated San Luis Obispo County, so that we could create a horse ranch. So we are loving living down here and one of the important things that, for me was to choose a city that I would associate myself with. And I, of course, chose Pismo, the favorite of the South County area, where I joined the Rotary Club and immediately joined the Chamber of Commerce. Awesome. And we've loved having you, Daryl. So, Daryl, how has COVID impacted your business? Well, uh, Group Purchasing Solutions is kind of a unique entity in that it serves a, uh, an industry vertical that has been mostly uh, unimpeded by this virus. Um, they, the microelectronics industry has boomed through this whole uh, process. And actually, I've been helping that industry source all of the materials that 
we are now gobbling up as business communities, which we call PE. Um, uh, when you make computer chips, you have to have clean rooms. So these people wear gloves and masks every day and they've always worn them. So I'm helping them source as the rest of the businesses are uh, taking up all of the supply. So I believe I'm actually doing a little better <laughs> in COVID times than I would have been doing otherwise. So I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. Well, that's excellent. Daryl, also tell us about the um, Office Depot um, discounts that you can offer to businesses. Sure, thank you. Um, so, um, like I said, we source materials for the, uh, the industry, and one of our major contracts is with Office Depot. And um, what we do is we create a contract with Office Depot to allow members of our community to uh, get discounted pricing on commodities uh, such as pens and paper and services such as printing. Um, so what I made a commitment when I joined the board is that uh, I would open our contract to all Pismo Beach Chamber of Commerce members. And if you go to the Chamber of Commerce page, you'll find a link that will take you to a, a site on my uh, website where you can easily join up and take advantage of these discounted services. And as I also committed uh, uh, every penny that my company makes as a result of spend by Pismo businesses goes back to the chamber. Wow, Daryl, thank you so much. So that even includes getting photocopies and anything done at Office Depot, correct? Anything. And even, you know, if they've got a sale going on on computers, they get our discount on top of that sales price. So it's, wow. uh, it's a good situation. Yeah, that's excellent, Daryl. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody needs any more information, you can just ask any questions to the Pismo Beach Chamber of Commerce and um, we'll find out all the answers for you from Daryl. So Daryl, thank you. That's that's a huge savings for a lot of people. So Daryl, talk about your position on the Chamber of Commerce. So since I don't really have a storefront or anything like that in Pismo, it, um, it was the idea that I could help best by monitoring government affairs. And of course, in today's world, uh, COVID brought on this huge issue that's impacting all the businesses in the South County, which is the closure of our Dunes Recreational Park. Yes. Now, that, that is, it's, it's catastrophic to many businesses and uh, we've got to do everything we can to get that thing opened but we have to do it in an environmentally safe and friendly way. So it's, it's really hard. I'm trying to monitor all the different stakeholders. I've identified five key stakeholder groups watching their activity and making sure that the lawsuits between them uh, come out favorably to what the business needs of our community are. And I just report out monthly at our board meetings on what's going on. Thank you so much, and we really appreciate all of those. And yes, uh, saving the dunes is truly important. At least it is to me personally. So, yeah. um, and what has being on the board meant to you, Daryl? Well, you know, um, I'm not sure if any other sole proprietors went through 20 years of trying to raise a family and start a company uh, where that's 100% occupying, and I had no time to do civic duty. So moving here, I told my wife when we first moved here, I was going to be involved. And uh, when I first met uh, Valerie and Lisa on pub crawl, <laughs> the good old days, um, I was immediately attached to the group. And it's so important for me to be able to work with you two as you improve the rep the reputation of this this group it's really been great we're we're working hard and i love walking into any business and introducing myself as a 
board member of the Chamber of Commerce, and it's usually met with a big smile, and thank you. Oh gosh, thank you. That actually brought tears to my eyes, Daryl. So everybody in the group already knows that I'm a little bit of the, the crybaby here. So um, <laughs> I, I do really think as a board, we have been working really hard uh, to help and promote our businesses. And Denise um, has just recently taken on doing a lot of the postings on Facebook for all the businesses um, in a big way. So, which is really nice. And now we have the outdoor seating that has been really big. So Daryl, we love having you on our board. Thank you so much. I think the moment I met you, I told Val, I said, we have to get him on our board. He is a winner. <laughs> so thank you so much. Great. So next we've got beautiful Ashley. Ashley Bauer, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm as close to a uh, Central Coast native as I think you can get. We moved here when I was four. I'm not going to say how many years ago that was, but there's a birthday happening this month. So um, it's been a while. Um, my parents, my mom started a real estate business in um, the late 80s. And when I came back from going to college at UCSB, I... Um, I'd met my husband, I'd had a career in publishing, and I needed to find what I was going to do here to stay on the Central Coast where I wanted to raise my family, so I joined the family business. So my mom and I were a mother-daughter team, just the two of us for the first 10 years, and then um, we had some great agents approach us actually to join our team and we went from being a mother-daughter team to being a team team and so we are now um, just about to sign our seventh agent licensee. A um, couple of those agents are part-time but uh, we have four solid full-time agents and I'm going to add two more and we're super excited about that and um just uh, trying to um, be a great representation of, of real estate, the real estate community on the Central Coast and help people find their forever homes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I love that. And I'm sure COVID has truly impacted your business as far as showing homes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, what we call it in our industry and I think other industries as well is we, we had to pivot, we had to, um, we had about two weeks, which in the, in the long run, after watching our poor um, beauty industry folks and restaurant industry folks, um, I am absolutely not going to complain. But in the very beginning, we were two weeks of non-essential. So that was a little bit of a took your breath away because we couldn't do, we weren't allowed to do our jobs and we didn't really know what that meant. And um, so we uh, took that time as a team to... Um, really embrace our uh, clients as well as we could through the available channels, which was our social media and, and online and, and just frankly picking up the phone and calling them. And um, we adapted safe practices. And luckily, after two weeks of hard lobbying from our great uh, California Association of Realtors lobby, we, they put us on the essential list. So that was um, uh, a little bit, uh, it gave us a little bit of uh, ability to do our, our job, but we just had to adapt all of the safe practices. So we, uh, we are the users of the PPE Daryl speaks of. We, um, we had to, in the first, those first few weeks, it was a little bit difficult because we couldn't find anything. So my mom, who is a seamstress as well, she started making masks and she made in total about 200 masks. Um, we got them out first to, we gave, a good batch to the hospital. They are not the type that can be used in um, emergent care because they're not the, the appropriate N95, et cetera, but they can use them as the overlays to their N95 so that their N95s last longer. And then the all the administrative staff that was still working in the hospital could wear the masks. So that was um, what we were trying to help them because they, they weren't using those um, coveted um, PPE products because they didn't want to take them away from their nurses and doctors. So we did that. And we also um, went out door to door to all of our high risk clients, um, either high risk for health reasons or for their age and got them out to all of those folks as well. Um, wow. And, and so um, we did that. Um, and then 
in our day to day, we've adapted uh, our homes. The, the whole showing process is different. Um, we have forms that people have to fill out to, uh, to disclose their health and if they have, uh, if they feel they've been in contact with anyone that might have been infected, um, we wear masks at every showings. Um, some some clients uh, prefer uh, gloves and booties as well, so we have to have all of that on hand. Um, so, but the good news, the silver linings are: we started a weekly sh um, interview show on our social media where we interview people in the community that. Um, might, might not be as accessible to the general community and um, and it's been really fun and we've done 15 interviews on a weekly basis so um, uh, we're really enjoying that and I think it's something that maybe we'll keep continue doing for the foreseeable future even when things are back to normal <laughs> so whatever but, normal is and right. where, where can people find that um, is it on Facebook or? Yeah, so we, we actually have it on Facebook, IG, IG Instagram TV, and uh, YouTube. And um, if you search Pizzo Beach Homes, um, then you'll find it on uh, any of those uh, mediums. And it's every Friday at noon. Great. Mm -hmm. And oh, Ashley, what is your position on our board? I am the chief ambassador for the board. Um, which means Tell us a little bit a about that. Yeah, there's a group. Uh, so every chamber, well, our chamber is unique, I feel, because we're all volunteer. Typically, um, there's, you know, paid staff in a chamber, and the ambassadors are kind of the boots on the ground. Um, so we, we all are volunteers, the ambassadors just try to help um, the core group of us on the board get uh, the things that we need done. So um, in COVID, that means um, several times we've they've done phone trees. Um, if it's if it's safe to do, they've walked uh, business corridors, talking to the local businesses. Um, in regular times, when we have mixers or ribbon cuttings, they're the folks that are present for that to celebrate um, new members or or current members. Um, and uh, we hopefully help Denise collect some of those raffle items. Uh, when we do an event, silent auction items. Um, really, ambassadors are meant to do hopefully anything that, that uh, we need them to do. Um, and uh, they're also, of course, business owners and members of the community. And I think eventually they evolve into board members um, if the process goes the right way, so. Yep, and what has being on the board meant to you, Ashley? I joined the chamber um, as a board member um, several years ago and I've gone through a couple of different administrations. Um, when I originally joined, I, you know, to be honest with you, I think a lot of people join a chamber not really knowing what it is or what it does. So in the beginning, it was like finding my place in it and understanding what it meant uh, to be a chamber member. And then in my opinion, it's, it's supporting all of our local businesses and um, also being the forward face of the community. We are the chamber. A lot of people think that we are the visitor center as Jeanette knows because she's been answering calls. They think that you call the chamber when you have a question about anything, is the beach open? And, um, and just being a resource and um, a good, as, as my title is ambassador for Pismo Beach because um, you know, my business, I doesn't have a, a, well, it has a storefront, but it doesn't have a storefront, like a retail storefront. So I don't get to talk to the general public just walking down the streets of Pismo. And so, but when I do get an opportunity to network or invite someone to join the chamber, um, just having my good elevator speech to talk about what it is, what, what we do and, um, and promote Pismo because it's the best place. It is. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. We really appreciate you uh, working with all the ambassadors. And if anybody is interested in becoming an ambassador, um, you can um, email us at the chamber or you can get in touch with Ashley. Um, yes. in any, on what You can Ashley. never have too many ambassadors. You can never no, have too many ambassadors. Actually, no, and their email address so people could email you. So my name is a little bit unique. It's Ashley with an A on the end, A-S-H-L-E-A -E at pismohomes.com, pismohomes.com, sorry. Ashley at pismohomes.com. And if you just do info at pismohomes.com, it comes to me as well. So. Excellent. 
Thank you so much, Ashley. So yeah. I was going to go to Sheila next, but I'm going to save sweet Sheila, try to say that three times um, fast. I'm going to move to Arish because I know Arish is in a little bit of a time crunch. So we're going to save sweet Sheila for last. <laughs> Arish, so share a little bit about yourself. How's it going? Uh, my name is Arash. I work at Giuseppe's in Pismo Beach. Um, I'm the manager there. Um, I work at the one in San Luis Obispo too. Um, I've been there for almost 10 years. Um, I've been on the board for not too long. I think for under a year probably. Um, and yeah, I love Pismo Beach. <laughs> and tell us a little about what you a little bit about what you do for Giuseppe's. You do more than just manage the restaurants. Yeah, no, I, I sort of run the whole operation. Um, we take care of all, you know, all the staffing, obviously. I've been with Joe at Giuseppe's for a while now. Um, so I, I run his operation there. I do um, our restaurant in San Luis Obispo and really anything else that Joe's got, Joe's got going. So you take care of his rental properties and you're kind of yeah. like yeah, he's, yeah, he's got his rental property down there on, on, um, on Dolliver. Um, so I help them kind of manage that. And then uh, we do all our wines, too. We've got 13 acres of grapes, um, bottled twice a year, usually. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's quite quite the operation. Huh. Where does Joe grow all of his grapes? At his ranch on uh, off uh, 227 off Tiffany Ranch Road. Oh, OK, yes. Yeah. I, I drive yeah. by that when I go to Tally to pick up my yeah. tap pots. He's got huh. 13 acres. Um, I think eight of them are grapes. Wow. Maybe, maybe closer to 10, actually, but yeah. Tomatoes, um, all the citrus comes from his house. Tomatoes, like more tomatoes than he could ever imagine. Wow. I had no idea that he grew all of his own stuff. Does he yeah. get his own zucchini blossoms, too? Uh, for Well, we go through so many zucchini blossoms that we can only grow enough for, like, a couple weeks, you know, if that. Um, but there are times where, yeah, the zucchini blossoms are his, too. Which wow. those, are, those are very popular. Yeah, they are. They're one of my favorites. Yeah. So, Arish, tell us a little bit about how COVID has impacted the restaurant businesses. Uh, well, it's impacted it pretty pretty severely. Um, you know, we're, we're lucky right now with the weather and everything that we're able to remain open. Uh, we're lucky that we were a business that has a parking lot that we could utilize. Um, and the city's been working with us both in San Luis and Pismo to make sure that we can remain open, which, which is awesome. Um, but I mean, you know, we, it's just, it's just jumping through hoops really, you know, every, it seems like as soon as we figure out one system to make restaurants work properly, it, there's a new protocol or, or something like that. So um, it's been an adjustment and it's, it's definitely impacted business, but um, we're all happy to, you know, at least still be working and be healthy and, you know, we're being as safe as we can to make sure that we, we stay that way. Yeah. Joe, or um, Joe, <laughs> Arish, did you guys have to lay off a lot of people or was everybody able to keep their jobs over at Giuseppe's? Well, originally, uh, back in March, when we had shut down, we did, we laid off pretty much everyone um, besides like the core, you know, management staff. Um, and that was kind of a bummer. But uh, as soon as we were able to open back up and bring staff back on, um, basically everyone minus like one or two people were able to get their jobs back and pretty much in the same capacity that uh they they had it before so um you know it was, it was a bummer we had to let them go originally but um it's glad to see everyone back back to work now i saw the new bar so just up yeah. in the caddy corner from my store i saw the new bar that was built and it was just used last night for the first time yeah we uh that, that's an old zinc bar and Joe bought that years ago, and we've been trying to find a use for it. We were gonna use it at our at our San Luis restaurant when we remodeled it, but it was too big for the outdoor area. We were gonna put it somewhere in Pismo, but it would, it didn't fit anywhere. So it had been sitting at the ranch, and um, finally we thought to use it in the parking lot, just as kind of like a little waiting area. And it just works works perfectly. It looks beautiful. Um, it polishes up real nice. It used to be like the color of cement. Now it's like a shiny you know zinc like it, like it's supposed to be yeah it's quite beautiful yeah I'm going to go awesome. by there sometime yeah You'll so Arsh, what's your position on the chamber of commerce 
So I'm just one of the directors, um, and I'm sort of one of the newer directors. Like I said, I've been here under a year. Um, so I just help out where I can, really. You know, I work a lot, um, just like the rest of our board members. Um, so as much as I can help, I, I try and help. And um, everyone's been awesome on the board. I love being a part of it. So. Thank you. We love having you. So what has it meant to you to be on the board? Um, well, to be on the board, I mean, bottom line, I, I love Pismo Beach. I mean, I've, I live in AG now. I just moved out here, but I've lived in Pismo Beach since I was seven, basically. I love the town. I love the community, the business owners, and just getting the opportunity to um, work closely with all these different board members um, really makes you feel connected. You know, you've got you know, someone basically in almost every industry, give or give or take, um, you know, at an arm, arm's reach away, which is which is nice. And um, it's nice to be able to represent a community that, you know, not only have I lived in for years, but I work in and I just feel proud to be a part of. Um, and, you know, like the rest of us said, we just love this town, love this community. Well, thank you so much, Arish. We really yeah. enjoy you being on the board. I know I've known you for a while about it, but I'm glad that yeah. you joined us. So we I'm, I'm glad I did too. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. So we have saved Sheila's sweet treats for last. <laughs> Sheila, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, I'm from Bakersfield and we always vacationed over here and eventually want to retire here this spot became available and we jumped on it. My other half is still teaching in Bakersfield, unfortunately, and I get to enjoy this beautiful weather. And I make people happy with sweets, baking, ice cream. So this is where we want to be. And I love the Central Coast. So tell us about some of the things that you offer at your store. Um, we have cookies, candy, ice cream, uh, drinks, uh, nothing alcoholic, of course. Um, just a little of everything. People come in and they're surprised we have more than just ice cream. So I have a little something for everybody's sweet tooth. And what about, what do you have in October? <laughs> oh, <I'm getting> <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I just got a call the other day. I'm making some today for a lady that's picking up three. <laughs> wow. So tell us about Tell us about those. <laughs> huh? Tell us all about those, Sheila, and how popular they are. Oh, they're very popular. I probably make anywhere from two to 300 in the season, and that's practically almost all I do. And I follow a recipe that I tweaked and made it my own, and so people tell me they're different than anything else they've had. So, And people should get their orders in soon, right? Of course, and I'll have two extra after today if anybody wants any. <laughs> okay. The last time I did them for her about a month ago, I sold the other two in a matter of days. So they go really quick, no matter when I make them. They are delicious. So Sheila, tell us how COVID has hurt your business. Well, it impacted us pretty good in the very beginning um, for about the first month or so. I mean, it was a ghost town here in Pismo. I'd never seen Pismo look the way it did. You'd drive down Pomeroy and there were no lights, no cars. And I mean, it impacted everybody pretty bad. Um, and since toilet paper was becoming hard to get, I decided to go to the people I buy cleaning supplies from and other things and ask them if I could buy a case of toilet paper. So I did a giveaway. Every $25 purchase got a roll of toilet paper, and I probably went through that case in about three weeks. Wow. So it got a lot of attention. I had to do what I had to do. <laughs> wow, Sheila. That's, that's, that's really good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, toilet paper, candy, hey. All right. Uh, and Sheila, tell us about your position on the board. Well, I'm a director on the Pismo Beach Chamber. I started off as an ambassador. I loved helping out and I don't know who roped me into becoming a director, but that's fine. I love helping the businesses. It's a lot of fun meeting new people and seeing what other people do and sharing ideas. It's, it's a lot of fun and I love everybody on the board. And what has it meant to you being on the Pismo Beach Chamber of Commerce? 
like I said, helping people. I love doing the behind the scenes stuff when we have events. I, I don't like being on the forefront. Um, I like helping get the raffles ready and just keep me in the background and I'm good. <laughs> I like to do all the grunt work. I'm a hands-on. I have to say, Sheila, you quite are hands-on. <laughs> We've done our taste of Pismo and our suds in the sun, and you are always one that shows up first thing in the morning to help build all the tents, even when they're very <laughs> difficult, and you are the last one to leave. So, Sheila, you are are quite a worker for us at the chamber, and we really thank and you so much. And that's the stuff I like to do that people don't see the behind the scenes. Yeah. No, nobody realizes what goes into all of those events, and they go off flawlessly. They're, they're wonderful. Yeah, well, thank you. One of these days, I'll get to enjoy an event. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hopefully you will. Well, and I want to anybody who's interested in being an ambassador should join. It is a lot of fun being an ambassador as well and work your way up. It is. I, I, I started being an ambassador and I really enjoyed being the ambassador. Um, and then from that, I became director and here I am. And look where you're at now. And look where <laughs> I'm at now. <laughs> My volunteer job that takes a lot of time. <laughs> it does. But you know, like everybody has said, it is for the betterment of our community. And um, I, love, I love our community. I love Pismo Beach. I have never been in such a nice, tight-knit, wonderful community. I had um, a gentleman come and wash my windows yesterday just because he's just a nice man. And I'll, I'll yeah, anyways, I'm gonna get teary-eyed. Anyways, he saw that my windows were dirty and I said, yes, normally my husband comes to do that, but he's been so busy and doesn't really come to the store lately. So he just took it upon himself to come and wash my windows yesterday. And that's just the nice community that we live in. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, so. All right, everybody, I wanna thank you for your time and being on our Zoom today and we'll see you out on the thank street. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for hosting. <laughs> You're Thank welcome. You. Have a good Thank rest you. of your day. You as well. Have a good day. <laughs>